This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to be making a 3D daisy cake design. It's broken down in steps, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. Let's start making our colors. We're going to make three colors for this cake, and we're going to use some white in addition to that. We're using all American style or simple buttercream. And we're going to use the following liquid gel colors. Buckeye Brown, Sunset Orange, there we go, Lemon Yellow, and finally some Royal Blue. To get started, I'm going to make kind of a light burnt orange color that we're going to use to coat our cake. So you notice I have quite a bit in my bowl because I'm going to use this to put a nice thin layer on the outside of our cake. I've got my sunset orange ready to go and I'm just going to give it a drop. I want the color to be nice and present but not too dark. Then I'm just going to take a few specks of my brown and this will give us a nice kind of fall color if we've got our intensity right. I'm going to start little probably on the light side. I'll add more color if it needs it. I just want a nice orange color. Give it just a little bit of that brown. Just to give it that fall vibe. And so that orange doesn't quite have that brightness to it. And we're going to do little white daisies with some kind of mustard yellow centers. So I want those to really kind of pop off this color. So it needs to have enough color that that white will really stand out against it. And it's looking nice. I might just give it just a touch more of that brown. And that's gonna be gorgeous. This way it has almost like, I would say it's almost a pumpkin spice vibe to it. So it's a nice color, looking great. Next, we're gonna make our mustard yellow. For our yellow, we just got a tiny bit in the bowl, just a little over an ounce. We're only using this for the flower centers, so I really don't need a lot. And I'm just gonna squeeze in a little kind of like half drop of that yellow. And then I'm gonna give it some nice little healthy specks of my brown. So I want that nice kind of golden, kind of mustardy, like Dijon mustardy kind of vibe to it. And this should do the trick. That way it gives us kind of a little more, has a little more brightness to it than the orange that we made. And it still has that little bit of brown in it. So they're gonna to go together, but this little bit of yellow should kind of pop out a little bit for us, especially on the white petals of our daisy. And you can see it's got a beautiful mustard yellow vibe to it. It's got a little bit of that intensity and brightness, and it's much deeper in value than the orange we made for the background of our cake. Now we're going to make our green, and we want it to be kind of a mossy shade. I'm going to start with my yellow. Nice big healthy drop there. And then I'm going to go in with my blue. Just give it a squeeze, touch lightly. That kind of gives you like half a drop, so I should have more yellow than blue in there. And like all my other colors, I'm just going to give it healthy little specks of that brown, and that should help us create a nice mossy shade of green. But we'll give it a mix around, see how it looks and we'll add some more color and adjust as needed. It might need a little more blue. See where it goes when we're finished mixing. I wanna make sure that it's a nice color and that it'll really read well against the kind of burnt orange color that we made to begin with. So it's looking nice. 
but I think it needs a little more color and just a little more blue to it as well. So I'm gonna do another half drop of my blue, a little more of that lemon, just a little bit of that brown. And that's looking nice. So you can see proportionally, I added a little more blue this time than yellow and the brown, and it's just made it just a touch cooler. And it's looking gorgeous. I think it's a nice kind of mossy green shade. It's really going to read well and kind of pop against that orange that we used as the background and give us a really nice, wonderful fall color palette for our cake. For this project, we're gonna use three 12 inch disposable decorating bags, one fitted directly with a tip, two we'll be using with couplers since we'll be changing tips. For our white, we're using a number 104. For our green, we'll be using a number six, as well as a number 104. And for our yellow, we'll be using a number two, along with a number eight. Let's review the techniques we're gonna use on our 3D daisy cake. The first one will be for petals. It's gonna use our 104 tip and our bag of white, and we're gonna make little J-shaped petals. The fat end will be towards the center of our nail. The skinny end will be out. We're gonna be in a lay flat position with that fat end touching, and we're just gonna squeeze while we turn our nail and then pull towards the center, and that little kind of J hook motion is what's gonna create our beautiful little petals for our daisy. Now let's talk about the centers. We're gonna use a number eight and a number two tip to create a slightly more complex center. If you've watched our previous video in our flower series about creating daisies, you'll notice that these are a different size than the one we use there. I used a number five in that video for my center and just made a nice little plain center of kind of like a normal size. I want to go a little bigger with this one, so I'm using an eight rather than that five. And I'm also going to use a number two to make smaller dots. So we're going to make these daisies just with a little different twist. So like any other dot, we want to be up off the surface and we want to squeeze and hold till we reach that nice full size. Stop squeezing, circle around and move it off. And that'll give you a lovely plain dot. And you can stop there if you want to, but what we're gonna do is use our number two, exact same way, create little dots, and we're gonna cover this whole surface in dots. And that'll give us a nice little textured center for our daisies. For our stems, we'll use our bag of green. I have mine fitted with a six. You can use anything around the size range. So think five, six, or even seven. The idea is to make some nice, fat, smooth set stems on the side of our cake. So when we're piping, we're gonna hold it at a 45 degree angle. Right now, that's in relation to our tray. Later, it's gonna be in relation to the side of our cake. So it might look a little different. And we want to squeeze and just ever so lightly drag the bottom edge of that tip right along the surface or just right above, just kind of gracing it. Should feel just like it's barely, barely touching it, just lightly skimming it. And that'll give you a nice smooth line. If you go too steep on your angle, so you can see if I'm rocking the back end of the bag up, when you squeeze, you're gonna smash your line and even with decades of practice, it'll be a little wiggly and a little flat. So it's gonna give you a much better flow, much less impeded flow if you hold your bag at a 45 degree angle versus the kind of smashed flat and wiggly ones you'll get if you're holding it um, at more of a 90 degree angle or upright in relation to that surface. So just something to keep in mind, nice 45 degree angle, just ever so barely grazing the surface of the cake with the opening of that tip, the bottom edge, and you'll get nice, big, smooth lines, which are fantastic for stems for daisies. And finally, let's talk about our leaves. We're gonna actually pipe these on a tray and chill them and then just place them on our cake, but we wanna practice them a little bit here first. We're gonna do flat, long leaves using our 104 tip. And when I do these, I'm gonna touch the surface with the fat end and just 
pull away from myself. So back of the bag is pointing towards 12 o'clock or noon. And as I go, I can give it a nice curve just by rotating the bag and draw it to a little point. And then I'm gonna do the same thing back the other direction. So sometimes we pipe these kinds of leaves a little shorter on our nail and you can make a traditional shaped leaf with them, but you can also extend it like this and pipe them on trays to make long kind of like big blade like leaves. So then we'll just give ourselves a point at the top and pull down the other side and it'll be nice and easy. My point just kind of disappeared. You can kind of manipulate them. You can put them in the refrigerator, let them chill till they're nice and firm, and then just gently remove them with a spatula and adhere them to the side of your cake with just a little bit of buttercream. And it'll be easier to make these on a tray than it will be to try and pipe them directly on the side of a cake. Now let's quickly review how to build our blossoms using the techniques that we talked about in our previous section. So we're gonna start with our 104 tip on our bag of white. We're gonna line things up so that the outer edge of that tip, the skinny end, is close to the outside edge of the flower nail. And this is important because a lot of our flowers will start at the center and pull out and back to make our petals. But for these, we're starting at that outside edge or nearly next to it, and then we're pulling towards the center. So it's just a single kind of motion there. We're gonna give ourselves a little bit of a squeeze as we just rotate the nail a little bit and that'll give our petals some width. And then we're gonna pull back towards the center. And then we're just gonna repeat that for each additional petal. So I'm gonna work clockwise. I'm right-handed, so that works a little easier. If you're a lefty, you can always work counterclockwise. If that works a little better. And we're gonna pipe each one directly next to the one before. So as we work our way around, the one thing we might wanna do if the spacing is really tight and close at the end is just rock the back end of the bag up at the end. So for most of these, we're gonna be holding our bag in that flat position, right, towards three o'clock, so over towards the right. And we're gonna pipe like that. When you get to that last one, you'll start out the same, but as you finish and pull towards yourself, if you rock the back end of the bag up, it'll change the look of the petal just a little bit, but it'll keep you from running into your first one, which is important. You don't wanna destroy your beautiful work with your tip as you're piping. So just something to keep in mind. If you have trouble squishing that last petal in, if it's a little tight, just rock the bag up from a flat position to upright as you pull towards the center, and that should fix that problem. It should allow you to squeeze that last petal in without destroying the first one you made. The next thing we're gonna do is grab our bag of yellow. I'm gonna go in with my number eight and give myself a nice large dot. And then I'm gonna switch it out to my number two and cover the entire surface in little dots. And that's gonna give us some texture to our centers and give our daisies just a little bit of a unique look and just a step up and towards realism for us. Uh, so if you haven't already and you want a more detailed tutorial on the daisies, you can always check out the flower series video that we did for them, but you'll notice a few little differences. Like we just use a number five for the center and we leave them plain. We like to start out simple and build up some complexity, but it's a really nice review. And this is a really nice practice for that technique and to put it to an actual practical purpose and give it some use by making a beautiful cake. So now that we've reviewed these, let's pull out our flower nail and give our daisies a practice. To start our daisies, we're gonna use our bag of white with our 104 tip. I've got a two inch flower nail and I've just marked the center of my parchment paper before I adhered it with a little dot with my Sharpie. That's to help me visualize the center. And this is a great way if you have trouble always pulling to the same point to give yourself a nice little visual cue. And then just turn it over so the Sharpie's on the opposite side and ne not next to um, my flowers that are, are going to go on my cake. But we're going to start with the fat end pointing towards the center of the nail, the skinny end pointing out, and we're going to start towards the outside edge of my nail. I'm in my lay flat position, little flat position with the bag, and the back end is over towards the right. I'm going to squeeze and rotate my nail just a little bit, 
and then pull directly towards the center. And it's fine if things don't perfectly meet up, if you have a little bit of a gap there at the end. Once you get all those petals on, you get all your center, your center on there, it'll all join together. And just keep going. Right next to it, always pull towards the center. And just adjust your rate. Sometimes it takes a couple of strokes, so you know just how fast to pull. how much to rotate so we get nice long petals. Sometimes I just have to slow myself down a little bit. To make sure that they go the full length and just go all the way around that outside edge. Start at the outside, pull towards the center. And for my last one, I'm going to rock the back end of the bag up and then pull towards the center. You can see that kind of squishes that in with very minimal gap, and we're ready to put our centers on and join everything together. To start our center, I've got my bag of yellow with the number eight tip on it. I'm holding it just above the surface, and I'm going to squeeze and hold till I get a nice big dot, stop, circle it around so I get a great surface. And if you want to, you can stop there. But we're going to go ahead and give this a little bit of texture and a little more realism and change to our number two tip. So we're going to cover the whole surface of the big dot we made in little dots now. So just start right on the side, nice and small. And I like to work in concentric circles, so I just start at the outside. and go all the way around and just nest the next row in between so you get kind of full coverage. And this is great practice for your dots if you're getting some Hershey Kisses. You can always work on that finish. And just keep going until you cover the surface with tiny little dots. And that just gives us a little bit of texture, a little bit more depth, and a tiny bit of realism for our daisies. It'll probably take three to four of these to finish our cake design, so you want to pipe a few extras, place them on a tray, and get them nice and chilled so that they're easy to work with later. We practiced making some leaves in our little practice session earlier, and now we're actually going to make some. And I don't want to make them too long. If you need to, take a minute and measure the side of your cake, and you can always mark your paper so you don't exceed that um, height. But I just want to go ahead and make a few, some long, some short, a couple for each grouping of daisies. I'm probably going to have three or four, so I need at least eight, maybe ten of these. And I'm going to do some nice and short, and then I'll do some nice and long. And this will give me kind of varying lengths on these to use on the side of my cake. So just really quickly, and I'll go some straight up, and I'll probably curve some over. That's going to give you a little more variety and a little more change and a little more interest. So don't be afraid to make a variety of different shapes. I like to rotate my tray to make things easier. and really help myself out. And it's fine if there's a little buildup in the middle as well. It kind of makes it look like a vein in the center of these. So just go ahead, make them going all directions, and kind of all lengths. So some, I'm gonna go ahead and do nice and long more tapered point. And this will give us some variety to play with on the side of our cake when we go to finish it. So I always like having extra. So I've got four there. I'll probably do four or five more just to give myself a little bit of extra, a little bit of buffer in case something breaks. It's also really great practice. 
um, and you can use your buttercream over and over again. So if you get one you don't like, just use your palette knife, scrape it off, dump it back in the bag, and pipe another one for yourself. But make sure you have plenty of extras to play with and that they're nice and chilled and firm when you're ready to lift them up and put them on your cake. So we wanna get these piped and then pop them in our refrigerator and let them sit for at least a good half an hour. Make sure they're nice and cold so they're easy for us to handle. And that'll also allow it to crust a little bit on the outside since we're using that American style buttercream, which will also give it a little extra stability. We're gonna prepare the surface of our cake for decorating. And so we already have our cake. You can use either a four or five inch round coated and iced with white buttercream and it's nice and firm. And we're just gonna give it a nice little layer of that kind of burnt orange that we made just to give it a pop of color on the outside. So to start on the top, just like we would if we were icing a cake, and we're just gonna go extra thin. We don't need a huge layer of buttercream. Just a nice light coating. So get it spread out, and then just angle your spatula and use your turntable to get a nice level surface on the top. Once you do, just go ahead and coat the outsides. Just really slowly put more color on your spatula as you need to. And if your frosting is nice and firm, it should just be easy to apply a nice light layer right on top of that white and get it covered pretty quickly. Just go back over any place where you got a little bare spot, thin spot, any white showing through. And it doesn't take more than a minute or two to make your way all the way around the cake. Just like my spatula for that first coating and then I'll use my little bowl scraper, just load it up with a bit of frosting, whatever I have left, go around the edges, just to make sure I have a nice even coating. Without any little low spots or dips. I just smooth it out really quickly. You can see, just quickly makes work of straightening up those sides. Once our sides are straight, I can take my little offset spatula, open that angle towards yourself, and just swipe from the back gently. You can use the motion of your turntable to help you out, but it makes really quick work of that buildup and gives you a nice smooth level surface on the top. Now, if if you haven't done this before, if you've got any bald spots, bare spots, any places showing through, or it's a little uneven, you can always chill it and go over again with another nice light layer just to smooth things up, even and straighten things up. But mine is looking good, so I really just wanna pop it in the fridge and get it ready so that surface is nice and firm and chilled to place my flowers on. To start working on our cake, we want to mark the sides. This is just going to give us an easy little pattern to trace when we're piping with our bag. So there's less guesswork and a little more confidence. And I want to mark just some nice light little lines on the side of my cake. It's nice and firm because it's been sitting in the refrigerator for a while. And I want some of them to go all the way up and some of them only to go about three quarters and halfway. And we're gonna put one of our piped big blossoms on top where they go all the way to the top. And then we're gonna show you how to use some of the same techniques to create some half daisy blossoms on the sides. So we just wanna give ourselves some other little stems that go to varying heights. And we're gonna kind of make little trios that are about equally spaced. So I'm just going to mark my two other tops and go ahead and mark those spots on the cake as well. The 
this way, when we go to put our little lines on, we can draw with confidence. Let's see. Maybe make this one come up like that. There we go. So we've got our little trios of lines going on. We're going to grab our bag of green and start piping. We have our cake marked and we're going to start piping. So you want to grab your bag with your green, make sure it's fitted with your number six, or if you're using a different size tip, either a five or a seven, all of those will work. Have that on there. And we're going to start just right here at the bottom, right where the cake meets our board. We're going to set ourselves up at a 45 degree angle, and we're just going to lightly graze the cake with the opening of the tip. So just start, squeeze, and just pull right along the surface and follow those little lines that you drew. If you end up with any gaps or spaces, you can go back in and fill those in later. Giving your cake a little minute to chill will allow you to easily deal with any air bubbles you get. And sometimes they're just because I need to go a little bit slower. It's a cold day. It's a little chilly in my studio. So sometimes moving my hand just a little slower means that I get a nice, full, thick line with no little gaps. Although occasionally your buttercream will just pop on you and just have an air bubble in it. So if you get the occasional air bubble, know you're in good company. It happens to everybody. So I've got my first trio on there. I'm going to go ahead and pipe the rest of my lines on my cake. We've grabbed our tray of decorations out of our refrigerator and you can see I've got a couple of extra daisies up there and I've got some nice leaves, all different shapes and sizes, bending all different directions that I have some extras to work with just in case I have breakage or I prefer one over another. And I've got this right next to me ready to pull things off of. I'm just going to peel my flowers directly off the paper and just use a nice clean offset spatula to release my leaves. To start placing my decorations, I'm going to use a little bit of my excess orange. I had some leftover. If you have some leftover green or another color like that, you can use whatever you've got on hand. And I'm just going to place a small little swipe right here on top, just kind of angling it towards the front of the cake. And this is going to allow me to place my little daisies and kind of present them to the viewer. So I'm just going to take one of my flowers one that I like a lot. Gently peel it off the paper and place it on. And since they've had some time to sit in the refrigerator, they are nice and firm. And they also have that little bit of crust you'll get from the American style buttercream on them, which means they're going to be easy to handle. And then I can place it so that it really presents it to you and gives it kind of a nice dynamic look. Right now, I just want to make sure that the center kind of lines up with the stem. So we have a good little kind of uh, line there with it kind of connecting so it really looks like that daisy belongs right there on top of that stem. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for my other three flowers and then we'll start piping some half blossoms and place those beautiful leaves. We've got our full blossoms up top so we want to first create some little half blossoms as well and we're going to use the same technique we're just going to go directly on the side of our cake so we want to imagine we're only viewing half of it and we want to just pull those cute little J-shaped petals, maybe three or four of them, a little bit away from the top of your stem. They don't have to be perfect. See, we've already got a cute little look going on there. And then I'm going to take my bag of yellow and just draw a little line. So just like we did to make our stems right here, kind of down at the base. So it's like you're viewing the center a little bit from the side. And then we're going to make petals right there on top of that. So we're going to start kind of right on top of that center and go out past the edges. So we're just kind of covering it up a little bit. So you have a little bit of yellow kind of peeking through. And for my last one, I might just need to change up the angle a tiny bit. But you can see this gives us the look like we've got another daisy there that we're just looking at from the side instead of looking at straight on. And once we create one there, 
we're going to pop another one on over here. So just repeat, same process. Give us three or four petals just a little bit away from the stem. Change our bag and put a little line of yellow across those petals. And then we're going to pipe more on top of that. So you can start out past your yellow and essentially put on a second layer. Same motion. Sometimes the bag angle gets a little wonky and you just got to change it up a little bit. But that'll give you some cute little daisies for the side of your cake that give it a little bit of that three-dimensional feel. Once we have those little half blossoms on there, you can go along and if you need to or want to, you can put a little green on the bottom just to finish them. I just like to pull some little spikes, which we've done a lot on a variety of different cakes, but just think a dot and pull away, do three right underneath, and that's a great finish if you have a little bit of a mess down at the bottom where everything connects and kind of comes together. It's a great way to put on little calyxes and finish the bottoms there without it being too much fuss or too much detail. Now I have some great little leaves that I've got off to the side. They are nice and firm as you can see. I can handle them directly with my hands. I just pulled them off the tray using my offset spatula and sliding it directly underneath. And that's a great way to put those cute little leaves on your cake. And these have had some time to sit in the refrigerator. So they've actually even got a little bit of a crust on them, which makes them easy, easy to handle and easy to place. And it'll probably only take three or so for each grouping, but I piped some extras just in case I needed them. And you can do them so that they're kind of overlapping your stems or so that they're just next to them to fill in more area. I kind of like making them overlapping, especially at the bottom where you get that little hiccup where you start your line. It's a great way to kind of cover that up. And if you need to, if things start to warm up on you, like your leaves, you can always put them back in the refrigerator, let them chill back up, or take them out only a couple at a time. But we've got this one area done. We're gonna go around and finish the rest of our cake, and then we'll come back and show you the finished design. So you can see we went around and we filled in those little half blossoms on each of our other stems and we put some leaves on to give ourselves some interesting groupings, some nice spacing there, right? There's some great voids between some of them and the leaves kind of help join them together and they're great for any little blemishes you have on your stems. So if there's little hiccups or anything else, you can put a leaf on top of it and cover that right up and you don't have to worry about it showing or going back and doing a lot of complicated fixes. Our little blossoms on top are nice and secure and are angled towards the viewer so it gives you a nice presentation from the side and you've got plenty on top. A plenty of space on top if you want to put anything like a candle or a topper to make this a cake for a celebration. It's got a wonderful and lovely fall color palette, but you could easily make this a great one for spring by changing it up and doing some nice light pastels that would work wonderfully as well. If you liked this project and you want to check out more, try checking out some of our other 3D cake designs, like our really popular carnation or our wonderful 3D rose cake. If you want some just lessons on flowers, we've got lots in our flower series, including a really thorough one on our daisies. 
If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.